Jesus once said, No one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and the Spirit. Today we understand these words to describe the rite of Christian baptism. Baptism is a personal event. It's a spiritual rebirth. Baptism is also the initiation rite into the Church of Christ. Some churches encourage believers' baptism, others believe in infant baptism. Different churches have different methods. There's baptism by submersion, backwards or forwards, once or three times, by pouring or sprinkling water over the head of an infant. Locations, too, vary from tradition to tradition. Baptisms are performed in sanctuaries, pools, rivers, and some even at places like the ocean. There is evidence for every form of baptism from writings and records of the ancient church. Christian catacomb paintings from the 2nd and 3rd centuries, for instance, depict a variety of practices. While Judaism no longer uses the term baptism, it is clear from the biblical record of John the Baptist that this Christian rite grew out of the Jewish practice of ritual washings, such as the mikvah. One documented example of the changing understanding of the Jewish baptism in early Christianity is found in Acts 19. Here, Paul encountered some disciples in Ephesus who were baptized. However, they had only received John's baptism. So Paul rebaptized them in the name of Jesus. This spot is identified as one of the possible places of the origin of baptism. Jesus himself was baptized by John in the river Jordan. According to the Gospel of Mark, just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, my Beloved, with you I am well pleased. No matter what the method, baptism is a source of inspiration for Christians all around the world. According to Romans 6, for instance, through baptism, believers participate in the death and resurrection of Jesus. We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death, in order that, just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. In the second chapter of Corinthians, Paul speaks about a transformation that occurs at baptism. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone, the new has come. Baptism is a joyful and inspirational celebration for those who are baptized especially. Those gathered to celebrate with them find meaning in remembering their own baptism. In some countries, Christian baptisms are outlawed. And in other parts of the world, people endure extreme conditions for the joy of celebrating their baptism. In a recent baptism in Siberia, for instance, there was no lack of enthusiasm. Several candidates were happy to be submerged in the icy waters of a frozen lake after an area was cleared for the event. Baptism is how we become born from above, and it's how we become part of the invisible body of Christ that supersedes all church denominations. In the end, there is only one Lord, one faith, and one baptism.